talking with Tom Tully. Thank you very much, Tom, for being part of this uh, history, oral history project for the Chicago History Museum. Um, for the record, Tom, would you state your name? Tom Tully. All right. Tom, before we uh, get into talking about the Mayor Daly, would you, in a maybe a minute, minute and a half, give us a rundown on your career? Yes, I attended DePaul Academy, born and raised out at Belmont and Central. Uh, from graduation from DePaul, I attended uh, John Carroll University in Cleveland, Ohio. After service in the military as a second lieutenant, I returned to Chicago and began a academic career at DePaul University College of Law, where I graduated in 1963, and I joined the Cook County Assessor's Office for a two-year stay, and thereafter uh, I joined the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, where I worked for approximately four, four and a half years in the criminal division at 26th and California. In uh, 1970, I returned to the private practice of law, and in 1971, I was asked to become the Chief Deputy Assessor of Cook County, where I served for the next two years. In mid-May uh, of 1973, I returned to the practice of law, where I uh, had the great fortune in November of 1973 to be asked by the Cook County Democratic Party to become the uh, nominee of the party for the office of Assessor of Cook County. Uh, in a contested primary, I was nominated in March of 1974, where uh, I thereafter became elected as the assessor after being the nominee in March of 74. And in November of 1974, I was elected the assessor of Cook County, where I served for the next four years. And in November of 1978, I, or 77, I decided to uh, finish my career. I had been in the assessor's office three times. I thought after 10 years, that's ample time to serve. And I went back into the private practice of law since December of 1978, where I've presently served in the law firm of, under my own name, Tom Tully and Associates, for the last uh, 32 years. Very good. Now, have you ever done an oral history before? I haven't. Okay. Then we don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, before we get to talk about daily, you had a, a, a close personal relationship with P.J. Cullerton, who was the assessor that you replaced. And uh, uh, was that from, were you from his neighborhood? I mean, how, it, how did you get to know him so well? As a young boy, um, my home was five doors from the 38th Ward regular Democratic headquarters. And all our sports equipment from St. Ferdinand's was stored at the Ward headquarters. It was very opportunistic of the Democratic Party to encourage the youth of the community to use its facilities, which they would support financially at St. Ferdinand's. And uh, I would go in there each day as a young boy, seven, eight, nine years of age, and uh, buy the ladies through their money, uh, buy them coffee or donuts or their sandwiches. And uh, during those years, I became very well acquainted with all the precinct captains and the aldermen, who at that time was P.J. Cullerton, who was the chairman of the, uh, initially the real estate committee, and then became the chairman of the finance committee. He had uh, no children of his own. He had a daughter, I should say, but uh, no sons. And uh, he and the lady who ran the 38th Ward, Kitty Nolan, who was a power in her own right on the northwest side, uh, took a great uh, affection to me and they would take me to the hockey games and all the various sporting events as a young boy and I came from a very large family of eight children and uh, I had the great opportunity to become acquainted with P.J. Cullerton and uh, from that point on as a young man in high school I had the opportunity to get jobs in the political system working at Portage Park, Reese Park and numerous other positions during the course of my college and uh, academic career at DePaul Law School. Okay, so, uh, and your dad was a fireman. 
My dad was fireman. My brother Jack was a fireman, and uh, our cousins are firemen. So we come from a background of numerous firefighters and policemen in the city of Chicago. So, did you run an Ed Kelly of the parks along the way? I never that... met Ed until uh, latter years when I was a prosecutor. Uh, he had some problem up in his 47th ward, right. and uh, I was on the phone to call him and ask him how whomever was the state's attorney, how we could assist him and, and the police department up there from any kind of crime that was occurring. But uh, that's how I first got acquainted with Ed and so many of the other political leaders because P.J. Cullerton was the power on the northwest side. There was Roman Paczynski, Tom Lyons, uh, John Aiello, uh, Mr. Garippo. There were numerous other elected officials, John Marson and many others. But uh, P.J. was the chairman of the Democratic uh, slate-making committee for the Northwest side. So whether if you were seeking the office of uh, Congress, you would uh, go to his committee in which he would call the meeting, and the meetings were held at uh, his office on the third floor of the county building, and that's where the candidates would present themselves to seek public office for, let's say, state senator, state representative, yes. uh, or Congress, or the U.S. Senate. So, so you, 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 you had a, prof a professional relationship because you had worked for his office, and then you, but you had, a, in many ways, even a stronger personal relationship. Yes, I did, because I was a precinct captain in his organization, an assistant precinct captain. I got to meet all the precinct captains for the 20 years preceding that time, and consequently, uh, I was well known on the Northwest side by helping and assisting other candidates who ran for public office. I uh, spent a considerable amount of time running and assisting candidates uh, who were uh, seeking public office. Tommy Lyons as a state representative, so many of Chester Majewski, and I can name numerous candidates that I uh, assisted, including myself. Sure. Now. Uh, Prior to uh, you returning to the, become deputy assessor in the in their 70s, early 70s, <clears throat> had you had any relationship at all with Mayor Richard J. Daley? I uh, had the opportunity as a young man to meet him when he came out to one of our ward organization precinct captain uh, meetings, and at which time he brought a couple of his sons with them who are approximately my age, the mayor, the President Mayor Richard Daly and Michael and uh, I don't know if it was Bill or John, but they came out to the meeting and I, of course, was honored to uh, meet them. But in latter years, during the years when I was prosecutor in the state's attorney's office, I, uh, a number of my colleagues in the office were working uh, with, I think it was Dan Ward at the time, so this would have been uh, John Stamos was the state's attorney during the Democratic Convention. Yes. And uh, I recall that I was on trial on some very significant matters at that time in which two police officers were uh, gunned down and we were trying the Capitol case. But uh, there were colleagues of mine working with the Chicago Police Department for the, a number of months preceding the start of the Democratic Convention. And uh, Jim Schreier being one of them, Judge Schreier. And number of other fellows, and um, so I was well acquainted with what we were doing to assist and protect the citizens of Cook County from the kinds of demonstrations that we thought might occur. Mm -hmm. And um, so in the evening hours of the convention, I had the opportunity to uh, go downtown and meet Mr. Cullerton in the evening, and we had dinner on two occasions with Mayor Daly. And uh, one occurred, I believe, at the Sherman Hotel and another one out at the Stockyards Inn, where I uh, have been reminded by my wife that that's when she met me because she is the daughter of uh, Alderman Matt Danaher, the, also the clerk of the court. And uh, that would have been in 1968. Oh, so that's, that's the, so you, you met her at one of those dinners? I don't recall, but she, re <laughs> <laughs> she told me she remembered meeting me. Yeah. But uh, yes, she was there with her mother and father and brother and sister at the convention also. So we would go out in the evening hours, Mr. Cullerton and I, to the convention 
and we were there. Uh, he was there as a delegate. I was there as an interested party. And then I would return in the evening after the convention. They would drop me off at my car in the loop. And uh, the loop at that time, anything near the uh, Conrad Hilton or Michigan Avenue was somewhat chaotic, to say the least. That's for sure. And uh, it was just a very, very interesting time. And then you would go into the office in the morning and talk to the people that were actually working undercover, both the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, some of the police officers, and assistants were working in conjunction with uh, other law enforcement officers. Yeah. Bob Pearson, one of them. Yeah, that's right. Bob yes. and uh, Terry Brackenberry. And, uh, Terry Brackenberry, so, yes. There are many, many others. But uh, it was uh, in latter years I became very well acquainted with uh, Commander Jim Rochford, who was the superintendent of police, and uh, Jack Kalaki and others who led the uh, police department in those years. So, so you met Daly basically. I mean, uh, you've yes, seen him I mean, talk, but then when you had dinner with him, it was yeah. more social than than. It was than social, but I mean, it, the meeting uh, as a meeting or a dinner meeting was very wasn't abrupt, but yeah. he had other things on his mind than yes. talking about or talking to me. It was very cordial, very welcoming, and uh, you know, dinner would be over in less than. 20 minutes or 25 minutes and we would get up and we would go into the uh, the amphitheater where we would sit and wait for whomever the next speaker was. Um, so now uh, uh, you're in the office and uh, and and PJ Cullerton uh, who was getting some bad press but nothing permanent um, decides not to run and and then you announced that you were running. And how did that come to be with Mayor Daley, who was also chairman of the party, and, and that would give us some political insights with about him? Um, I had announced to Mr. Cullerton that I would serve one year as the chief deputy. And it dragged on for about another year after that. And, uh, and you instituted I, some reforms, just for the record. I did. And, uh, but the reforms were instituted by Mr. Cullerton. I mean, he was the assessor. I followed his mandates, and so I carried out what he uh, had thought we should do as a result of the very, very challenging election that we went through in 1970. And from that point on, uh, I got acquainted with Mayor Daley, who was the chairman of the party in, in 1970. And the, we brought in a uh, group called Real Estate Research and Jim Downs was the chairman. And I worked with Jim Downs and his son, Dr. Anthony Downs, and uh, we came up with a reconnaissance study that was published in February of the year 2000, and, excuse me, uh, 1970. Right. And uh, from that point on, 1971, uh, it was determined that I should become the chief deputy, and they asked if I would leave the law business and become the chief deputy. And uh, during that time, I had the opportunity to speak with Mayor Daley, and he asked me if I would so consider, and I said, yes, I would. And so from that moment on in February of uh, two, 1971, I took over as the chief deputy, where I served for the next two years. But uh, during that interim period, I had told him I'd serve one year, and I would try to leave and he said, fine, find a successor. So it took me a, a considerable period of time to find a person of the skill set, management skills, and leadership skills, and also the understanding of the assessor's role and understanding the assessment system. And I found a gentleman by the name of Judge Ted Swain to take my position, and he did a remarkable job, and uh, he had all the skill set that I thought would be needed 